What's going on, everybody? I'm Grim. I'm Joel King 627 I'm Vile Mods. And I'm KT of Family Foam Sport. We are your hosts. Welcome to PNNN. This time around is a bit slim on the news, but we have a handful of very cool new releases to share with you. We're also trying out some tweaks to our format, so please let us know what you think of these changes down in the comments. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button so you can catch the news as soon as it comes out. Anybody remember the Elite 2.0 trio? User SharkChew on Reddit found a new two pack of them. One in the two pack will be the original color scheme of the blue, and the other will have the blue replaced with orange. It retails for 17 United States dollars. The Nerf Limited Star Wars Boba Fett's EE3 Blaster, initially available as a pre-order on January 11th, 2022 for $110, has finally begun arriving on customers' doorsteps. While early limited blasters like the AR Goosebumps and the Mandalorian Ambin Phase Pulse Blaster were promised six months after pre-orders opened but suffered from significant production delays, the EE3 follows in the footsteps of the more recent Aliens M41A and Halo Needler, which were promised 12 to 13 months out from pre-order and delivered more or less on time. In fact, a couple customers received the EE3 as much as a month early in early February. Initial reports indicate that the EE3, advertised with meticulous detailing, was delivered with the same kind of aging and detailing that was used on the Mandalorian Ambid Phase Pulse Blaster, widely assumed to be Silver Sharpie. Additionally, the EE3 was advertised with metallic swappable cylinders and darts, but was delivered with brown and light nougat parts instead. There's even a printing error on the manual, covered up with a sticker. Kudos to Nerf, though, for making realistic delivery promises and for largely solving the problems with damaged and stickered packaging that plagued early limited releases. Over on Discord, Buff Daddy found a Dark Zone patent for what appears to be a pan-style magazine-fed blaster. The blaster is shown to be in pistol format, but details this blaster to quote, maybe in various other shapes and arrangements without departing from the spirit and the scope of the disclosure. The patent notes the goal is to offer a blaster that's drum doesn't obstruct the user's offhand while being aesthetically pleasing and high capacity. As for how it works, it would appear the drum holds 15 darts horizontally and a pusher moves darts into a flywheel system. As mentioned earlier, the blaster's final shape and even capacity potentially remain to be seen. However, it is rather refreshing seeing Dart Zone continue to explore designs that are unconventional to what we currently see on the market. I know I, for one, am rather excited to see how this one pans out. We now have another addition to the Flycore ecosystem with the release of the FLP-03 from creator Shoeless Historian, a Flycore straight talon-fed bullpup running hurricane wheels and possibly flywheel the world wheels, but Shoeless said they haven't tested that yet. It looks to be a small CQB-style blaster, judging by its styling and flywheel options. This is definitely an intermediate build, since it requires M3 heat inserts and some fancy wiring to get everything to fit. Along with these files, you'll also be required to have the Flycore STLs, which luckily the creator has a link to in their description directly to them. But if you want to take a look at the files for this blaster, then check the links in our description. A while back, Nerf made a blaster called the Pocket Strike. It was basically a jolt, but flat. Unfortunately, these days, it's very difficult to get your hands on. What you can get, however, is The Leaf by Shanye from Silver Fox Industries. The Leaf is basically a 3D printed version of the Pocket Strike. It gets 50 to 65 FPS with both full and half-length darts. Silver Fox Industries will be selling it in both build-it-yourself and pre-built form. Mega XL fans rejoice! Domachevsky has released the Hamavald, a 3D printed, clip-fed, shell-ejecting Mega XL flywheeler. Although this release is technically a beta to give Domachevsky an opportunity to make tweaks for a future final version, it is fully functional, huge, and powerful, firing Mega XL darts up to 75 feet in his own tests. Additionally, he has made shotgun shells that fire four elite darts at a time. The clips hold six shells at a time, the blaster runs on a 3S LiPo, and the whole mess just looks super fun to use. 
The Hammervald has a fictional backstory that's worth checking out as well, building on the plot behind Domachevsky's previous designs. The Hammervald is currently available as an $11 USD 3D printable file set, or as a $442 USD complete blaster over on the Genco Megaworks Etsy page, and Domachevsky says that hardware kits will be available soon. Find that link down in the description. And with more releases over on printables, Mein Gonk has released the GNK 200 or Gonk 200, a dual stage brushless motor solenoid blaster, or as Mein Gonk put it, a slim low hardware nerf brushless flywheeler designed for fast play styles in a small package with gonks. This is a very sleek blaster that runs on 3S LiPo that comes complete with its own folding stock, which looks pretty sturdy from the images. Gaunt put a lot of detail into the build description, complete with FPS ranges, configurations, Arduino pinouts, firmware, even the step files to build off the design. Of course, with Creative Commons license, there's no selling of the files or parts without talking with Gaunt first. This will definitely be a more experienced build, but does have room for those that want to push the limits further. Links, of course, should be down in the description. In community news, I found a cool vintage Super Soaker at the thrift store today. Actually, we don't have any community news for this episode, but we wanted to take a quick second to outline the changes we made to our show format. Instead of the first party, third party, and community layout that we initially borrowed from This Week in Nerf's tagline, we've decided to reorganize the sections of the show into three new sections. Name brand news, which will cover everything related to any brand developing its own blasters such as Nerf, Dart Zone, Busby, Worker, Game Face, and more. Hobby news, with a focus on 3D printed designs, mod parts, and gear made by individuals from the community or companies of any size, and an overall focus on the equipment side of the foam flinging hobby. And most importantly, community news, with a focus on events and the people that make our community what it is. While we may continue to experiment and tweak with our format in the future, we're excited about this shift and would love to hear what you think down in the comments. I really, I really did thrift this today. It even holds pressure. This episode's mod spotlight goes to Not Enough Nerf for his Elite Junior Explorer mod. At first it might appear like a very simple mod, but there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. On the inside, the Smart AR has been completely rebuilt with brass and parts from a Fang QS4. I'm very impressed. I've never seen someone rebuild a Smart IR like that before. With a spring upgrade from a Busby Clash Combat, his FPS is punching into the triple digits, which I would not have thought possible from an Elite Junior Blaster. Very, very nice. If you haven't already seen Not Enough's video on this mod, I highly recommend you check it out. Link will be in the description. And that's the news. As usual, the Companion Podcast will be out tomorrow where you can hear more in-depth discussion. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. Consider joining the Discord, and please check out all our individual YouTube channels. Thank you, as always, to our growing list of contributors. We'll see you on the podcast, then be back in two weeks with another episode. This time around is a bit slim on the news. Uh, I forgot to start it. She sells by the seashore. She sells. She sells. She sells. She sells. And the Mandalorian Ambin phase. I forgot to stand over to the side. Should I try this side this time? Does that look good? Yes. Yes, it do. Mega XL fans rejoice! I'm gonna be cleaning those up for a while. That was nice. Wow. One take for both. Get wrecked!